Hello there, guys, and welcome to the making of pandas. The first thing I do when I start a more involved piece like this is I always take some time to sketch out my concept on the watercolor paper that I'm using and make sure that I can envision how I want it to look when it's finished and how it feels and if I can't I need to spend more time on the sketch because it's kind of that vision that drives me through the painting. What I start with in this panda piece is the pandas themselves. They are the most graphic element and contrasty element, if you will. So I wanted to make sure that they were sticking out. So when I do start to lay the background, which is usually what I do first, I could paint around the pandas and make sure that I do not paint in their little white fur. Plus, it is very gratifying to start with an element that moves the piece forward for me. Um, I'm kind of an impatient painter and I'm such a visual person. And sometimes if I start an involved piece and it kind of is in that phase where it doesn't look like much progress is being made and it doesn't sort of look like anything, um, for a while I get a little bit disheartened. So I found actually that starting with the pandas was a really gratifying part of the piece and um, it sort of immediately gave this effect of me being able to see the finished piece more clearly. I use a wet on wet technique to lay down most of my backgrounds, especially the first layer. So I soak the page in water. As per usual, I am using my favorite paper, my Arches cold pressed paper, and I will link that below. And it can handle a lot of layers and a lot of water and a lot of saturation. That is why I use it. So. I go around and I do a little dance where I wet an area and then I just dab a really saturated splotch of a different kind of green or a different kind of turquoise um, for this sort of forested effect and I let the water do the work for me. Um, this is truly the joy of watercolor. I find that the less I try to control it, the better it is, always. And I have left the background kind of a little bit splotchy and light and you know I'm not too worried about it being finished because I can lay down more later but in the case of this piece I really wanted the tree branches and the pandas to create the composition and the movement of the piece. I really wanted them to stand out and not to get lost in the green. And I always have fun with these larger pieces. There's always a, a storyline going on. So, you know, in this case, it's this panda playground. I imagined what would a kindergarten be like for pandas. And um, so I kind of thought of what would all of them be doing and what are the different personalities? These trees are the unifying element of this piece. They also work to lead your eyes around the page. So they take you up the first tree branch to where 
the bears are playing. They take you across to where the little bear is hanging and sleeping. And then they take you down to the swing element and they keep moving you around. And there's never a point where you get stuck or want to stop. And um, that is something that I always keep in mind when I'm creating any piece, like what is creating that cohesion in terms of the visual balance and composition? What's the hierarchy of the piece? Where does your eye go first? And um, what are some of the subtle elements that sort of unfold themselves later? Another thing that I love about watercolor, and I always do, is if I'm doing an element that's all green, I will always use about six different colors. So I use green combined with tan and more bluey greens, and I really kind of work that whole spectrum. And I think that it just adds like a really nice point of interest to the piece. Now it is time to put the second layer on the bark. And here, I add a little bit of definition. I want the bark to be dark. I am aware that that rhymed. And I want it to look alive and be this beautiful, rich brown that naturally frames the black and white bears. Ultimately, the bark has three layers. There's the first layer, there's this detail layer, and then there's the stain on top, which kind of adds this cohesion um, and blends the detail layer with the first layer and makes it really rich and beautiful. And this is why I use the arches paper, because it can take all of these layers and really give you that richness of color that some of the cheaper papers can't. After you have spent so long and are so close to being finished, Sometimes I find that putting details on a piece can be pretty intimidating um, because you don't want to mess it up. And for that reason, I use pencil so I can always erase it if needs be. I also use pencil because I think that it adds a softness to the piece. Um, pen is just a little bit too hard for me, especially since it's like an organic piece, you know, everything is alive and I almost feel like pen turns things into something that's a little bit more um, cartoony in this case. The pencil means that you can always erase and then it is mindset. The trick to art and especially watercolor is just going with the flow and having no fear, basically. Because the moment that you pause and the moment that you second guess a stroke or a line or whatever, I find that everything starts to go downhill and you start second guessing everything and um, you start to get out of that nice state of flow. And I mean, this happens to me uh, 20 times in any given piece I, st I feel like I start to get out of the flow and when that happens I usually step away actually I usually don't force it um, and I come back um, because it's always better 
with a little perspective. Very often there is a middle point in the piece where I don't like it and I want to just scrap it and start again. And it's funny because when I watch back, I usually don't even remember when when that was. It uh, it usually looks fine after there's a little bit of space between me and the creation. And then you have this little tyke who is enjoying the panda playground. And this is the little boy, Henry, for whom this piece was dedicated to. Um, So it's actually uh, a portrait, very involved portrait piece of Henry. And in Henry's actual photo, he was wearing stripes. And that works for me because I love a stripe. I feel like every human child I do has stripes on. Often, if it's a portrait, the parents, of course, will know what the personality is much better than I will. And so I think that we fixed little elements like Henry's hair and stuff like that. A small detail, but one not to be missed, is actually adding um, shadows to the bears and anything you feel like. And this is something that's really subtle, but it can be just like a really delightful, cohesive element at the end. And so I take just a really, really light black, and if I want it to be a bit warmer, I'll go with a brown and a little bit cooler. cooler. I'll go with a blue, and I just go around and add shadows to one side or the other. And of course, never forget to sign your piece. And let me take you around this playground. We have the mama bear pushing the swing. We have all of the BB bears doing various things all along the branches. I think this hanging guy is my favorite. We've got the papa bear who's acting as a panda swing for Henry, who is having a jolly old time with the bears in the forest. And this is what the whole thing looks like when it's digitized at the end. So I hope you enjoyed this painting of the pandas, and until we meet again, TTFN.